Hey guys, Adam here with yet another repair video for you today. And let's see, what are we going to work on today? Is it going to be perhaps this Arkanoid cabinet that I found and let go a while back? Or maybe this MAME cab? Ah, oh boy, decisions. No, actually, unfortunately, we have to work on this today. So this is the wife's uh, minivan, and she's been having some door issues. I know you guys are probably hoping to see me work on another board, another arcade game, but unfortunately... You know, family comes first, and this has been a huge inconvenience to her for a while now, so we need to address this. So what's the problem? Well, this is a, what is this? This is a 2012 uh, Grand Caravan. It's got um, automatic sliding passenger doors here, which are very nice. This one here is not closing. It's opening, but it's not closing. And the way this works is that there is a motor assembly that's kind of tucked in deep inside of here. There's a rail system here and then it's got this wiring harness that kind of feeds back up into the door and so when you press this button here the door should close and then when you press it again it should open. It's closing properly which is nice but it's not opening. Um, one of the most common symptoms uh, or not symptoms, what common um, issue that's causing all this is a problem in the wiring harness. Now I did take a quick peek at the wiring harness and it looked okay to me. I didn't see any broken wires or any of that business. So I'm a little hesitant to call you know, it an issue with the wiring harness. We will take it all apart and we'll ohm it out. I'll show you how to do all that. Um, the other reason why I'm kind of skeptical as to it being a harness issue is because I've noticed that this door in general is being very hard to push, even manually. Um, so it feels like the motor is trying to do that. I assume there's some kind of safety mechanism, safety sensor built in here so that if there's too much force, then it'll uh, abort, you know, trying to open the door. And that's kind of what it's doing. It's kind of trying it and then stopping, trying it, stopping. And I'll demonstrate that for you guys. So actually, if you close the door here, you'll see it closes just fine. And then watch what happens when I try to open it. Here, it's doing that. Now, if I try to do it, help it with my hand here, you can see. So the motor is moving. It's just that, and it kind of times out here. There's something going on that's preventing it from, from going all the way. And if I push this with my hand, it's like, it's there's a lot to it there to make it move. And it should not be like that at all. In fact, I tested out the other one and just moved it freely with my hand. And it was, you know, pretty easy to kind of move back and forth. So what do we got to do? Well, let's first take the harness out, at least lay it out here so we can inspect it. I'll show you how to do that. But what I think we really are going to have to do is pull this whole motor assembly out from underneath the, uh, the floor there. And so we'll go over that in a little bit. But let's get started. I'll show you kind of step by step how to pull this whole thing apart and, and inspect it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is uh, just disconnect this harness so we can inspect it. The harness is connected to the door way over there. See that connector with a little red tab? You kind of just uh, slide that tab off to the side with a little screwdriver and then there's a button you can push to pop that out. I'll do that off camera. You can see there's a few tabs here that kind of uh, connect to the door and to the metal. And these are, I just, they're like Christmas tree tabs. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but they look like little mini Christmas trees and it just allows you to, you know, grip or connect a, a harness to something with a hole drilled into it. There's a few of those. We just pull those out with the screwdriver. And then the last connector is actually right here. So this kind of pivots back and forth, side to side, uh, right here. And if you pull that little tab out like that, and then grab a screwdriver, you should be able to just pop it right out like so. Comes out like that. So let me go ahead and disconnect um, everything down over there. And then we can, uh, I'll show you how to open up this little casing here so we can uh, inspect the harness. All right, so I'm attempting to kind of show you how to pop this guy off. There's a little red tab over there. And what I usually do is just kind of get in with my screwdriver. Oh, do I have my, my light in my... Yeah, I do. That doesn't help. <laughs> Let's have the light off to the side like this. Maybe that's better. What do you think? So then I can pop this little plastic piece up like so. If I can get in there, it's a kind of a tight spot, but pop it up like that. And there's a button here. Hopefully you guys can see it. Let me move the light over to this side. It's right here. See it? And so you grab that button and it pops right off like so. Okay, so we got the whole harness disconnected here. You can kind of see it. And so the way to get this out of this little 
sheath here is if you take a look, each one of these little clips, okay, uh, there's a hinge side and then there's a clip side. And so all you need to do is get in there on the clip side and pop it. Actually, I think I'll grab my larger screwdriver here. So you just get in on the clip side and you just pop it off like that. And you're going to do the same thing all the way down the line. Um, if you want to get it completely out of the harness, you're going to need to pop this last piece here because there is no clip or hinge on this last piece. But you can see it's kind of like, you know, it's basically a chain. And so you can remove this one length, link rather, by just gently popping it like that. So once you have that disconnected and all of these open, then you can pull the whole wire out of the harness. All right, so now that we got our all these little clips open, you can just take this wire and gently pull it right out of the the track here. Like so. Kind of work it all the way out. All the way to this point here. Now this point is actually mounted down through those little Christmas tree uh, type connectors. I've already loosened it uh, because I know I'm going to have to take this whole thing out, but I'm just kind of showing you what you typically would do if you wanted to check the harness first. And then uh, to totally remove it out, you'll have to also disconnect the sensor that's kind of sitting over here. We'll get to that in a second. So here's a good spot to kind of just look over your whole harness. Uh, make sure that none of the wires are, you know, frayed or broken or insulation has been compromised or any of that kind of stuff. Like I said, I've already been through this before and everything looked really well. This, of course, uh, is covered in another jacket, um, which seems pretty intact. So anyway, that's kind of step one, and that's where most people are finding their issues. And that's, you know, when you have an uh, issue like that, typically the door doesn't work at all. Um, but in my case, like, you know, like I said, or demonstrated, it's going in one direction, it's not going in the other direction. So, all right, so how do we move on to the next step? There is a uh, connector. Let me just move my camera over here so I can see what's going on. There is, I'm sorry, not a connector, but a, uh, a sensor. I don't know if you guys can see it right there with a Torx head. Let me pull it back this way so you can see it. How about that? Is that better? There you go. So this little Torx head there that'll pull out that. And then this whole um, harness can kind of get moved off to the side. Um, after we do that, it gets a little tricky. So what we need to do after that is work on this kind of main connector here that, that connects the door to the, the whole track assembly. There are, I believe, two or three nuts that are, are in the door itself over inside of here. Now, I really don't want to have to remove the entire paneling of the door, this whole thing here, just to uh, get to those. So what I'm going to try to do is basically just shim this small portion, the lower portion of the door, and move it out enough for me to get in there with a, uh, a ratcheting um, wrench and remove those two bolts. That way I don't have to go through and take all this side panel off. I really hate to do that. So I'm going to attempt to do that. Um, that'll disconnect this from the door, and then we can disconnect this bracket from this through a couple of bolts here, and I'll kind of go over that step by step. But, for now, let's go ahead and remove the harness. Let's get rid of that sensor there. We'll pull the harness out, and then we'll go ahead and see if we can disconnect this bracket from the door, and then we'll disconnect this bracket from uh, this part of the assembly here. I went ahead and pulled off this this little whatever rubber protective uh, portion that goes here, just because it's so much easier to kind of see what's going on now. Um, I don't have a Torx for this size. But I do have a ton of English and metric um, Allen wrenches, and so I just grabbed one, and uh, that fits pretty nicely, and it just allows me to get in. I mean, I've already loosened up, you can see, but allows me to get in, in there and, and uh, remove that. So, not what I would like to do. Uh, I cannot locate my <laughs> my torque set right now, so I'll just go ahead and use this, uh, probably for that, and probably for this too. As I'm looking over here over my shoulder, I see there's another one here, so I'll probably have to do play the same trick for that as well. All right, so here's what I got going on. I have a shim here. I managed to pry just the lower portion of this door. I have my shim in here. And if you look inside, sure enough, you'll see there's a bolt there on the bottom. There's one up there. Where is it? 
see if I can, there you go, see it right there? That one right here? So there's one, there's two, and then there's one on the other side. Not sure if you can see it there, but there's three. So let me go ahead and pull those off. Once I do that, this door is gonna wanna fall. So I have like an egg crate, or milk crate rather, that I can stick underneath here to take the load off. Um, but until, or once that happens, you got you just gotta be careful. This whole, the weight of this whole door is gonna be, I mean, there's, there's mounting points up there, right? So it's not completely just, you know, um, relying on what you're putting underneath, but um, you know, try not to bump, bump it. Obviously, whatever when you're when you're working on removing this, the rest of this assembly, so that this thing doesn't, you know, cause trouble for you. All right, so we are completely disconnected here. You can see the door is suspended on that crate. So what we need to do now is remove. There's a latching mechanism. Not sure if I can show it to you from this side. You can see right there. Right here, there's a latching mechanism with a cable that goes in from this door. And it basically just, when you bring it to a, a fully open, it locks it in place. So there's two, uh, two bolts on top that will remove that. And we can kind of pull that out of the way. And then the last thing that connects this bracket uh, to this whole assembly is uh, that um, uh, Torx, Torx bolt right there. So I'm going to pull this, and pull this, and then this whole piece, I believe, should be uh, completely free to go. So I just wanted to um, explain something as I'm doing this in real, in real time, I discovered something. So um, pulling the Torx bolt first is far easier than having to deal with these first because it allows you to remove this whole thing and just kind of get it out of the way. And then you have easy access to the two nuts that are here. All right, so now that this is completely disconnected, you can see this thing can just roll freely. But we need to get out of here, right? So there's a single wheel on the bottom and there's two on the top that are behind that little track so you should be able to just lift it up, pull this whole thing out, and then put it away for safekeeping so we don't lose it. So, uh, so we're looking good here. We got the uh, harness completely out, sitting over here off to the side. Not a problem, plenty of space to work. The door is disconnected, it's off to the side. And really all that's left now is pulling this whole thing out. So I believe there's a series of bolts from the top that hold this in. So the first thing we need to do is pull this out. Let me clear some of the stuff off here. And so I believe that this, if you pull it towards you and then up, there's a couple of clips, like there's a clip right here. Let me see if I can get better leverage as I do this here. It is kind of tricky with one hand. Here we go, actually it's easier from the back. So I loosen up from the back and then you can deal with the clips that are in the front. There we go. This whole thing comes off like that. There's one more clip I can feel it on the end here. Tuck that away. And you can see there's one here, 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 here. And if I'm not mistaken, there's one up in here. So we'll have to pull the carpet back for that guy, I believe. Um, let me just feel in there with my hands. Yes, right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Where is it? Ah, it's right here, actually over here. You pull it in like that. Hopefully the camera can focus in on it. It's right there where my finger is. So, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. That one's hidden. Once you get those done, this whole thing should drop down, and then you can work its way out of this cavity right here. One quick note, don't forget to take care of these two bolts here as well as the five that I mentioned. These two hold on this little bracket that, that the uh, latch locks onto when the door is fully open. So it's these two and then plus the five. All right, so I went ahead and pulled all the bolts. So this thing now is just free there. Of course, there's a lot of grease on it. Um, what we want to do is kind of pull it this way, tuck it between, take this end rather, well, let me start over. <laughs> we take this end, push it in, take this end out, Stick it in between that cavity, between the door and the uh, the van itself, and just push it in there as far as we can until this end comes free. Pull it out and then bring it back that way. Um, I'll I'll do. You can kind of see what I'm talking about. But there is one other thing that we need to uh, address, and that is the connector. I went ahead and removed it, but I just want to show you where that guy is. So if you pull this guy out, you'll see this is the I believe um, like the controls for it for the motor. We'll, we'll see the motor in a second. There's the harness. I'm sorry, there's the connector. Let me pull this guy out. You can see it. This connector was sitting right here. 
and I basically just pushed that button and then popped it off. Just like we did with the door. So you push it in, pop it off like that. Now this whole end is free to move around. So I want to set up the camera here, stationary. Let me see if I can just drop it right here. Uh, get it in focus. How's that? Not bad. Let me move it back a little bit so you guys can see. So what I want to do is basically take this end out. Slide it between the door and the van until this whole other side is free. Voila. All right. And this is the whole assembly itself. I'm try to get it in frame so you can see it. We've got a motor over here. We've got a, uh, I don't know what's in here. I think it's just like, this is kind of like um, plastic. It's like a plastic cable. And I think that's all wound up in here. But this is what I actually want to take a look at. I want to pop the cover off of this and inspect it. Make sure the motor is spinning freely. Make sure this is not gummed up or anything like that because there is some resistance to that door. We have to figure out what's causing that. So again, this is just another angle. I have it out here on the floor under the light so you guys can see it better. So this whole section over here, my understanding is this is like the control module for it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's getting sensor information and, and the status of the door, the position of the door and all that kind of stuff from here. And then basically it sends electrical signals over to the motor to indicate whether you want to open or close it and all that other kind of stuff. So like I said, there's this plastic cabling that goes through, comes through these, um, these sheaths here. And it's all wound up in there. I definitely want to pop that open. We'll do that in a second. And then I actually might just pull the motor off, make sure it's spinning freely in both directions. Um, something's getting uh, gummed up there. So why don't I do that? I'll start by pulling this off. Take a look at the spool in here. What's it look like on the other side? Actually, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, so I uh, can pop these off as well if I need to. Um, I've never taken this apart. I mean, this is the first time I've laid eyes on it. So um, kind of methodically, I want to attack it probably in this direction but if I need to poke around in the back I guess I can pull these caps off too so anyway let me go ahead and start digging in here and uh, I'll let you know what I find all right so I popped the cover off and it looks to me like this cable is just wrapped around uh, this here this pulley like two times two or three times and it goes through these sheaths obviously like I said before to the top just in moving this around a little bit um, it seems to me like it's getting freed up more. I really can't do this with one hand. Actually, let me just put this down. Throw it down like that. As I'm working with this more, it seems like it's getting freed up. I almost wonder if it's just dust. So I live way, I live way out in the woods. Like literally my house is, you know, almost a half a mile out into the middle of the woods and we have this long dirt driveway. And so I'm almost wondering if it's just dust that over time has gotten inside of these. Wow, look at that. Um, because as I started loosening these up like this and then popping this guy out and moving him around like that, actually this guy's kind of gummed up. Um, I noticed that it was moving, you know, more freely. So I'm going to, I think, just continue to work on this. I don't want to have to put it all the way in the car and then realize, nope, it's actually not that. It's something else. So I'm going to continue to inspect, uh, continue to kind of work through taking this apart a little bit more. Um, but it would be nice if that was all it was, was just, uh, these sheaths here getting really dusty um, and perhaps we just need to lubricate them so that uh, you know it's kind of like I, know, I used to race dirt bikes and um, you know your throttle cable and your clutch cables you had to lubricate those because the dust from the track would get in there and your, your throttle would stick or your brakes would stick or whatever um, and so you just want to keep those lubricated so uh, wouldn't it be nice if that was all it was so anyway, I'll keep poking around, and uh, we'll see if there's anything else that that uh, that I find. All right. So the more I'm digging into this, the more I'm thinking it is a lubrication issue. So I pull the spool completely off. You can see here, basically how it works. Right? It just wraps around the spool, and as the thing spins, it kind of climbs up and climbs down the spool here. This thing is feeling kind of dry, really dry actually, and and rough. And so I'm going to take this thing off, completely clean it lubricate it, throw back on, um, do the same thing with these cables, lubricate them up really good. But what I noticed is that this thing here is spinning very freely, which is a great sign. I don't think I'm going to have to tear into this anymore. Um, that was my other concern was maybe dust got in here and the mechanism in here between the motor and this, um, this little gearbox needs lubrication. But this thing is like, you know, totally fine. I can almost free spin it, you know, like that. Um, so I think that's fine. I think I'm going to focus my attention on this mess here. 
um, clean this all up and it's just so so dry and um, hopefully that'll be it so yeah let me clean this madness up and lubricate it up and then we'll come right back all right I couldn't resist I, I had to take it apart a little bit further I flipped it over and I was just curious to see if any of the dust had penetrated inside of these two gearboxes and luckily it did not so you can see here it's just there's a worm drive that comes in from the shaft from the motor it spins this this gear which spins this gear in here there's nothing in here it's beautiful it's clean and so I'm just going to very gently put it all back together and <laughs> focus on uh, lubricating those lines all right so quick update what I've noticed is that these actually work best when they're not lubricated at all and so in other words I lubricated one I tried to slide it, you know, back and forth, and it was, you know, it was, it was sliding fine, but um, I left this one alone. I cleaned it up really good. I got rid of all the residue. This seems to be coated with some kind of, I'm not sure what it is. So this is actually a cable. I thought it was plastic, but no, it's not. It's a steel cable that's coated in, like, Teflon, probably. Um, and I think that was the intent, is basically just that alone through the sleeve. See how freely it spins? It's like super, super slick. And when I added just a little bit of lubrication, I'm just using like a three-in-one oil, very lightweight oil, um, because I didn't want to use like grease or anything that, that is kind of thick. And it was actually less friction just having it be dry. So I think I'm going to clean up the other one that I already put oil on and leave them dry. And I think that's probably the intent. I, I wouldn't be surprised if from the factory these are completely dry. And just over time, you know, mine had dust in them and whatnot. But I'm just noticing again that these things, they just they move like a dream when they're just completely clean and, and left alone. So let me take a step back and clean the other cable that I already uh, put a little bit of lubrication on. And um, same thing with the little spindle. I'll make sure that that's completely clean. No oil. I'm just curious to see how this thing spins freely uh, without any lubrication on it at all. All right, so we got all the, the spool all wound back up. Everything's uh, connected back together. And look how freely this moves now. So much better than it did before. So yeah, I really hope that's all it was. All right, I'm gonna go through the tedious process of putting all this back together. I'm not gonna film any of that um, because it's just a reversal of what we already did. But cross your fingers, I hope that's all it was. And uh, we'll see. So we got everything put back together. Closes very nicely. But, Still does not open. Ah. Now, one thing that's nice though is that holy cow, is this smooth now? It's like really smooth. It moves on its own. So, I definitely did take care of that issue. Uh, I actually think now it might be something uh, inside this door. So I've been kind of working with this and playing with it. Um, there's obviously electrical connections that go into the door. I think there's sensors that indicate the position of this uh, mechanism here, this latch, and also the position of this latch. So the door will not attempt to close if this latch is not in the proper position, which indicates that the door is all the way back. Um, so I can actually kind of demonstrate that here. If I move it over here, I stop it. We'll let it do its little thing here. Right, so if I move it all the way back here, but the latch is open, and I hit this button. Oh, actually it did close. Interesting. So how is it determining position? That is really odd. So how does it determining position? Because if I have it over here, and I push the button, I don't think it'll do anything. Right, but if I have it way over here, you know, it must be determining position by the spool itself inside the motor to know whether it's all the way back here. Now if I push it. Yes. Hmm. I'm wondering if this is a control issue now. With that um, control module. Oh, that'd be a pain. This is going to be an expensive fix. Hmm. So what are all the connectors going into this door for then? If there's nothing in there contributes to this. All right, so change of plans. I think it actually might be this control module. Uh, I've seen them floating around on eBay. Took a picture of the part number here so I can match it up. But before I go ahead and do that, 
I hate to purchase something and have it be expensive and have that not be the case. I think what I'm going to do is pull this unit from the other side of the van um, and then swap out the control modules and see if that's the case. This is a quick way to know whether or not that's the problem. I've done this thing probably, I pulled this thing in and out so many times today, I think I could do it in like 10 minutes. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, let me pull that out, we'll swap it, and then uh, we'll see what's going on. All right, moment of truth. Oh, interesting. All right, let's go to the other side. And if this does not open, then it was the control module. Aha! Uh -huh. So, that means I just need to pick up one of those control modules. Luckily, my wife was nice enough to tell me, or remind me rather, to take a picture of the thing before I threw it back under the car. So, let me go order one of those up. As soon as that comes in, we'll put it in the other side, and then we should be all set. All right, we have our new power sliding door module. Uh, let's pull it out here. Yes, that looks like a power sliding door module. All right, so let me go ahead and rip this out again and throw it in. Actually, I'm curious to see how long it's going to take me to do this because I've done it like six times already. So let me set up the tripod and we'll see just how long it takes for me to swap this guy out.
Well, that didn't seem too long. I'm actually curious to see how long it took. We'll, uh, we'll find out when I edit this video. But let's see how she works, if she works. All right, so she closes, but it was doing that before. The real test, the real test is right here. Yes, we have fixed it. Thank you. All right, beautiful. So yeah, there you go, there you have it. If you own a caravan, Grand Caravan, Town & Country in the 2010 range, uh, that's how you go about replacing a um, power sliding door control module. So yeah, hopefully you guys found that interesting and it'll help out others who are in the same boat that I was, but I'm just glad that this is fixed and I'm sure my wife will be very pleased as well. So yeah, onwards uh, to other things like moving this beast upstairs, perhaps in another video. So cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching as always. And uh, I guess that is it. So God bless and we'll catch you on the next one. I just want to see this work again. Isn't that nice? Love it.